Well, hello. Welcome back. This is, I guess, video number three of my Armiton Chameleon build. I think I get to actually start building tonight. It's 8.22 p.m. Just, uh, January 8th, 2018. Um, yesterday, I made my different little baggies for the different steps uh, for the build. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is my flight controller instructions. This is in my little box of parts for things I don't need. Let's get my motors out of the way. And um, I'm kind of tempted to like actually open up everything else. So opening stuff is fun. Um, I mean, I can see what these are. You know what? I'll open it up as I need it, and then we'll go from there. Cause like, I don't need a lot of this stuff yet. So. Let us just do the first step. Let's get this thing started here. So, my little baggies from before. Um, my step one baggie, which will have the nylon. There's a little. And also, up towards the bottom. In theory, this is my step one baggie. Also, my light is working, which is nice. It's a little warmer. I preheated the room. It's 61 degrees now. I don't know what uh, temperature this thing needs to be, but when it's super cold, it'll just flash. It won't actually turn on. Okay, so that's my step one baggie. Let's start. So here's, um, oh, this is actually interesting. What I've done in the past is I've used a little bit of electrical tape on the bottom to hold these in place, but it looks like with the um, with these nylon uh, little nuts that go in between, that will do the trick. But when you don't have these, a little bit of electrical tape on the back will hold it all uh, for where you want it to be. So hopefully, these are the right parts. I never actually test fit any of this. Okay, looks like my flight controller is the right size. That's all I really care about. Everything else I'll figure out how to, how to mount it as I go. It's not, I don't think, going to sit nicely. So I might make little, um, little platforms or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I feel as we move forward. I think all of these guys are the same. Okay, four, five, six, seven, and the one that's on there is eight. Okay, okay. I don't have, whoops, dropped one. What I don't have is a little teeny tiny wrench for this stuff. Um, that might be something I should look into. I don't know if guys use that or not. <laughs> So I just use my fingers and make it finger tight, and then what I'll sometimes do is get something like my um, my wire cutters here. And the tip of them is not sharp, so I can kind of grab it a little bit and just give it a little bit of an extra tug here. I also ordered some thread lock, but I don't have it yet, so I can't use it yet. So I might do some disassembly and reassembly at some point. You can also probably hear the baby monitor is on. Everybody is hopefully asleep. Hopefully they will stay asleep. So I can get a good half hour, 45 minutes on this. That would be nice. Hmm. Looks like this one's not machined quite right. And this is the side that I want on the threads. There we go. A little force, just bend it a little. Okay. All right. 
I think it's just a matter of putting these little teeny standoffs on here. Although, I think I probably want to put the flight controller on. Mm, I wonder if I want to put the flight controller down on the bottom here. Then put these rubber guys on. Um, I want that on the very bottom. Yeah, I think I do. But then I don't actually have anything to go on this because lots of times you put the power distribution board down first and then you put um, this guy on. I really don't think I'm going to need it. I'm not sure what to do here. Um, I'm just going to put it on for now. I'll light, lightly mount it. Let's see, is that going to touch? Okay, yeah, I don't like that. So, um, because I'm not plugging this into an ESC and it has the, these pins here, I'd want it to have a little bit more space. So, I'm going to put these on. That answers that. And I can't really screw it down much farther because uh, I only goes so far onto it. That's fine. It's going to look a little weird with my PDB or distribution board because I don't need one because there's one built into my flight controller. Alright, so now this, let's just see if I mount it the way that they want to mount it. Oops. I'm guessing, I don't actually really know which way is the front, which way is the back. Alright, so that would make sense. That's the back. So in theory, it's going to look something like this when I actually put it on, which I will lightly put it on for now, because why not? It doesn't actually hurt anything. Again, just don't finger tight on everything because I don't really need it to be locked down yet. Oh, man, I'm really tempted to to bring it down a little bit lower. I just, I mean, I feel like I don't need it to be that this high up with no PDB here. But if I ever change my mind, I mean, I could use it if this fails or something. I don't know. I don't know. I got mixed feelings. Got mixed feelings. Anyway, let's just keep, I'll just do the frame and uh, we'll see how I feel. Okay, so, so let's go to the second step. The second step looks like it's building the camera frame, which I don't need that for. The front, so I'm going to need these. Too baggy. It's kind of nice. This flight controller comes with a whole lot of extra standoffs and nuts and screws and little rubber. Um, oh, I guess I could have put those on there. Little rubber washers to put on each side of this. Interesting. Oh, I might do that later. We'll see how I feel. It also comes with the battery lead, which is probably a fair amount longer than what I need, but it's nice that it comes with it. And then it comes with a buzzer. It's kind of neat too. I've got one a little bit bigger over here that I might use instead though. I'm not sure if the bigger one means it's louder or not, but I've got, well, I got this one here too. So, a couple options. Okay. Um, to this step. This step has this guy. So this is my number 
two step. And I'm wondering if it makes sense for me to put the camera in it. No, I'll, I'll wait for now. I'm not going to do step three, because like step three is just putting the, the top one, which I don't want to do yet. Um, Yeah, I can do that without putting the top on. This will be easier to get to the camera, I think. Alright, so I'll just keep, keep on trucking. Alright, step two pile. Baggies over here. A whole bunch of new baggies, fresh new baggies. Uh, yep, I do this. This. I might pull up the video, the build video that um, Armiton has online and confirm that I'm doing things properly here. Maybe I'll do it after this step. Probably more fun to do it after this step. Okay. So, oh man. Um, so it's just making both assemblies here. I'm going to start with this one. They're probably one and the same, I'm guessing. But we'll just look at it this way. I'm doing this one here. This goes like this. This goes like this. This guy goes in here. Uh, I don't know if it pushes through it. And if so, which way? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to assume that this goes through it. I'm not sure it looks like it does. Get this guy out of here right now. Nice if this is already in there. There we go. Oops. Not quite through. Okay. And then this is will rotate for the, uh, for the camera. Pretty cool little piece, actually. All right. Put one of these in here. Not sure which way it goes or if it even matters, but I'll just kind of pop it in. Okay. So that's all there. This is going to go like this, this goes like this, it looks like this goes through that, goes through this, and it's a 10 millimeter, which is one of these, three, and then probably threads in here, yeah, good. Now we'll, I'll just do finger tight for now, and when it's ready. Right, um, so that goes to there, and then it goes through which one? It's actually hard to see. I would assume that the bigger one goes through here, but looks like it doesn't fit. So I could be wrong. Let's do another one of these 10 millimeters through here. Anyway. So I feel pretty confident that 
that's right at least. Oh, oh, there we go. That's the problem. Okay. And this little guy is the one that would go through here. That's going to be for the camera. And without the camera, it will not work so well. So, I don't, oops, I don't want to lose it. Uh, I'm guessing this is going to be this way. Does that make sense? Up and down. No, I feel like we'd pivot on this. I feel like I'm doing everything right here, but this doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> like this needs to go into something. It doesn't right now. So what am I doing wrong? Okay, pretty sure that that's right, but it's not going to stay. So, um, so that could be a problem. Okay, so that's going to be how I would adjust the the GoPro. I'm not sure exactly what this does. So for right now, we'll put it down. Whoops. Oh yeah, right. So that's how we, I'll adjust the GoPro, which is pretty cool, up and down. Let's switch that up a little bit. For now. Okay. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. So, same kind of principle here. So on the outside. This is going to go inside here on this side. Push it through. Okay, oh, sorry, kick the camera. Okay, I think that's all the way through. Um, this one is going to go that one, that side, so this goes right on this side. Like this, like this, and then this goes in there. Is that right? I feel like, yeah, I like that's right. Okay. Yeah, I feel good about that. Put one here. that too. And it gets a little sketchy from there. So I think this goes in like this. And then this guy, oops, I can put a little nylon thing in. Okay. So that's in there, good. Maybe it's supposed to go on the other side or something, I don't know. I still don't know about that. And then this goes in here. Okay, and I feel pretty confident that that's accurate. Okay, um, and then this is for the little standoff, which is, where was that? 
I left it. I just left it in here. Let's just see how this how this feels. So I'm gonna put this to go all the way. Oh, it actually threads in right there too. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I can thread it. And then I can basically just thread this on to here. And then this one will uh, be in the orientation right. So this is the outside, this is the outside. So I'll go like that. Okay. Let's just put this through here. Yeah, you know, I just, I am just not so sure about what's going on with these little guys. Yeah, I've got... I mean, it must be for the camera. It has to be. There's nothing else that it, that it could be. So, let's get this on here. I don't want to break anything, so I'll just do it like this. Um, yeah, I mean, if I tighten it, it looks like that, but that's that's fine for right now. Um, okay, so where did my camera go? Let me just see what that looks like again. I can find where I put it. Oh, it's right in front of me. So this is going to be up like that. That would fall in there like that, basically. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I see it. I see it. All right, well, let's just take this apart and see what happens. I'll try to actually put just mount the camera without obviously hooking it up. Oh, yeah, there's even like a little indent for it. All right, that's pretty clever. Pretty clever. I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> okay. And then, again, finger tight only is all I really need for right now. It feels like it's cross-threaded. So that's just going to go right on into there. I can tighten her up a little bit when I need to. And then this one. Eventually, goes into here. Switch out my bits. Little thing back in there. Okay. So that's in. Get this one in here a little bit better. Alright, cool. 
So that is the camera mechanism, which is pretty sweet. Try putting it backwards. Nope, got it the right way. Okay. Up and down. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Well, I'm going to leave the plate off of it, the top plate, which is what step three is. So let's just take a look at step four, which I'm guessing is... Yeah, just slap that bad boy on there. Basically like this. Tight, tight little fit. Nice. Okay. Um, let me see how I like the electronics or don't like them. I'll still be able to take that off. Not any issue, my flight controller. Looks like I'll easily be able to get some wires up in here. I like it. Alright, cool. Let's, uh, let's put it on, why not? Why not? This will just be four screws. Looks like four screws to me. Four 12 millimeter M2s. By the way, if you need more screws or whatever, um, I mean, you can order them directly from Ironton. But I've also found Ace Hardware is um, a really good place to get lots of little screws and, and um, other little things that you need for your build. Can't quite tell if it's lined up. Feels like it's lined up. And this is another one where I would use Loctite if I had it. So I may be deconstructing and reconstructing the quadcopter after a few flights. See what starts to come out and what doesn't. In theory, this should just slide in as well. That was a theory, of course. There it goes. Thing's starting to look like a quadcopter. Okay, and then anything beyond that is just, um, for example, putting these guys on. And each one of these has pads, which is pretty cool. So I can guess. I guess you can stick the pads to it um, to, uh, I guess, to protect the electronics from touching the carbon fiber. Cool. All right. I think that step is done. I'm not going to worry about putting the top onto it yet. So I've got two. Two. I guess that's the top plate. And then, oh, it's a, uh, this is just a pad, I guess, for the, um, oh, I get it. So this is a pad for the GoPro anti-slip. That's what it is. And this is a pad for your batteries. That's what, that's what this is all about. Cool. Oh, and there goes my light, which happens from time to time. I'm just going to ping me. So let's see, ping me. Okay. All right. Good. Just move that over there. Okay. And the light came back on. Perfect. Perfect timing. I can put this little guy back. I think I can put this little guy back. Um, and then. Oh, trash. 
I mean, I think it's time to start looking at some of the electronics and start actually building this thing now. So, I could build it all on here, which might actually be the easiest thing to do. Now that I think about it, if I take this back off, then this will all be kind of right where I want it to be. Yeah, I kind of like that actually. And then I can just start soldering right onto here. I can put my motors on. I think I can just build this whole quadcopter actually on the quadcopter. So, I will now take these back off. Get the camera out of the way. And I'll start to actually build this thing. And what I'll do, hopefully I can just put these screws right back into here and hopefully they'll, they'll stay. They should. Once it locks onto the bottom. Mm, I don't like seeing the scratches on it. Such a pretty quadcopter getting scratched up. But it's going to be eating some dirt and whatnot and tree branches and whatnot, so it's going to get scratched as time goes on. Okay. Let's pop it off. Look at those nice little scratches. Oh, so sad. So, so sad. All right. And put this back on. This will go in like this. What I can do is probably just put this right up out of my way. Let me plug my soldering iron in. I'm going to unplug the GoPro. Hopefully the battery will keep going for a while. All right, soldering iron is plugged in. We'll get nice and roasty toasty. Here. Okay. Put it, uh, I can put it here, have it looking at me. Okay. Take the camera again. I'm not going to need this maybe ever again. Serve it up for a while. Put that back here. Don't need the instructions for the camera. Put that back here. Now I think what I can do, so my battery, um, where am I going to put the battery on this guy, top, battery goes on the top, so what would be good actually is to know about where this will sit. I think that the battery wire is designed actually to come out in the front. I believe it's designed to come out this way. I can look at some images online. Let's see. Some images here that other people have done. Yeah. Yeah. So I just have that come straight up through there. Which makes sense to me. Oh, I see. And a lot of people put the. Let's see, yeah, this is the way I look. Looks like a lot of people, or some people anyway, um, just mount the VTX farther back. The video transmitter. 
Right, yeah, that looks cool. So it looks like people have the video transmitter just hanging out behind it. Back here, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, let's take that on up. I light one off again, I see. Do I have to cut this to get into it? So one of those like cut it open and it's a zip tie type of bag. Thing. Okay, this is my video transmitter, shrink wrapped, cool, and then this would just, I may as well just open this up kind of for fun, um, this would go through, what is this, yeah, just the connector for it, and I think that there is a... Um, a little rubber thing that you can put through here if you want to, which I will probably do when I actually go to build it all the way for now, just to kind of see how it feels. Oh yeah, I think I'm going to need that. So for now, put that like that, that like that. Um, this could go, this is going to go here, so this almost has to like sit on top of it, so that I'm not bending, um, so I'm not bending this thing too hard. So that's just going to have to be zip tied to something in there. Actually, I could probably slide it underneath it. Kind of like that, kind of like sliding it underneath it actually. So I can run those wires underneath it. Do I like that? I think I'm okay with that. So I'll hold it in position better. These get hot. These get super, super hot too. So maybe it is actually better if it's up higher. I'm gonna rotate it this way. I think it might end up just kind of sitting on top of this. Wires plug in here and here. Okay. All right. Well, let's just leave that there. Actually, I can put that up there at the other part for now. A bunch of zip ties. How many zip ties? Give me one, two, three, four, five zip ties and some solder, which I'll be using some solder in a minute. Might as well use the solder they gave me, which is a little bit thinner than my big fat solder that I've got. So why not? Okay. About ready to go. The solder iron is still on. Good. Okay, um, this will be what I will attach to that, which will be super cool. It has a little cover, which I think just like, kind of slides onto it, I'm guessing. Like clip it or something? I don't know how this works. I don't want to mess it up. I don't know if you just like slide it in. 
really is only going to fit one way. But then, where the heck do you get it to stay? I mean, you can kind of like jam it in there. Oh yeah, yeah, you just jam it in there. Okay. I don't know why they don't just ship it like that. Why wouldn't they just ship it like that? I don't know. And then, let's just see what it looks like. Little, little tail. <laughs> there you go. Boop. I'll probably bend it up a little bit. Assuming this bends somewhat, yeah. With up or down or something, I don't know. Keep it out of the way of the props. Whichever way makes the most sense. Maybe down. Maybe straight back. I don't know. Figure it out when I put it on. Actually, I'm going to use this solder for the big stuff. I'm going to use the little solder for the, for the little stuff. So I think I'm going to start by just pre-soldering the battery as well as the ESCs and the ESC sig the signal pads actually I'll use the smaller solder but for the big stuff I think I can just use this well of course the light goes out right when I want to start soldering we're at 40 minutes here on this third video it's going to be some long videos Alright, I don't actually really need the light for the, this, these big soldering jobs, so here we go. Okay, the first one I wasn't super happy with, but all the rest seem to be pretty decent as far as my soldering skills go. Okay, let's get these ones. I'm not too happy with that one. Okay, pretty happy with most of those. Like a little bit too much on uh, some of them. But overall, I'm pretty pleased. So now, we'll use the smaller guy for the, um, the signal pads. Okay, got them all pre, pre soldered, tinned, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Okay, um, I am pretty satisfied with that overall. A little, couple little droplets here and there, but all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I could um, probably figure out a couple of the others that I know I'm going to need to do. I got the signal wires battery wire. Um, I know that I'm going to need S bus, 5 volt, actually I'll pause if I need 5 volt. Um, I guess I am going to need it for the receiver. Not sure where else I can get this power from, but uh, let's see. 
There's the boot button, it's over there. So, I know I need S bus, which is going to be the second open circle. Uh, but open circle ones, um, I probably want to put the wire through, and or maybe I might even use um, pins. So, I'm not going to jump, jump the gun there. All right, I think I'm good for now with my soldering. So I will unplug soldering iron, plug it back in the GoPro. Sorry if that does anything weird when I do that. And let's just leave this alone for now. Why don't we, I would like to, I think, melt some motors, because that seems like a fun thing to do. And also there's another kind of unboxing type of deal. So, how do we open these? Is a good question. Oh, there's the tape that goes all along it. Okay. Both sides, both sides. Okay, and these have very long wires. I think it was 19 centimeters. Said on the website. Yeah, really, really long leads. So that's good. I mean, you can use it for all sorts of different applications. Oh, and it comes with a little. I'm gonna have, I guess, four of these now. Four wrenches, which is pretty cool. Props clockwise. That's cool, because it's a counter. This one was the counterclockwise motor. Right. Counterclockwise motor. It go here and here. Clockwise motors go there and there. Because props go clockwise here, counterclockwise here. All right, well, really long <laughs> leads. A little bit longer than what I really need. That's fine. All right, so this will become trash. This will become trash. That out of the way. Let's just see what these look like on here. Some more little baggies. Okay, that is really cool. Little um, motor bolts, and then you've got your prop bolts. Very cool. All right, but we are here to put the motors on. So let's do that. So we're just going to go here, push those little wires flat. Man, this thing really sits up high. That's cool. Let's start with one. Sorry if I'm doing a lot of this stuff off camera. I don't actually know what the camera can and cannot see. I'm just assuming I can see most of what I'm doing, since it's the super wide angle lens. It's actually kind of difficult to install these because they're, um, because it's, uh, it's like floating on there. It's super cool. I really like the design. I've never installed motors like this before. The ones I've done have been like full, they have the skirt around the bottom. So I'm able to just kind of grab them and bring them over. Man, these are cool looking motors though. Look at that. Look at that. That is super cool. You can see right inside it there. It's 2306, 2450 KV. And they're going to be pretty wicked. Seen some reviews online of these as well, and everybody seems to like them. And again, I'm not going to kill myself getting these on really, really tight right now. I really just want 
Just want to see what it looks like, see how it feels. And then this is going to be, these wires are going to be much shorter. I'm probably going to cut them to about there. And then the ESC is going to go there. And then connect up here. These come with extra wire as well. Man, not a wire here. You could have these things be a mile away. Very cool. I can maybe I'll do some pre-tinning of those too. <laughs> do that later tonight. All right, let's get all these motors on. That'll be maybe the last thing I do in this video. Let's see how I feel. Oh, I don't want to lose this. Um, don't want to lose it. I like that it comes with an extra. I like that there's both black and silver, so you can have your options. But I'm just going to put it up there for now. I won't lose it. Not if it stays somewhere close. Okay. And this one is a clockwise. Yeah, I'll put all that extra, some extra stuff in the spot. Trash back there. Trash back here. Bring that up. This one's clockwise, so this one can go right here. Oops, I guess I do need the hardware out of it, right? Baggy, extra baggies are awesome. Motor bolts. I do wish it came with one extra or two extra motor bolts would have been nice, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm getting picky. I always like extra hardware though. So these are the things that you lose when you crash. And I will crash. It sounds like one of my kids might be getting a little restless in there. Maybe the dog went in the room. That happens too from time to time. I think when I am done putting this together and getting the videos done, I'll probably do like a time lapse video and make this whole thing go super, super, super fast. That stupid light. I gotta get it. Oops, a normal LED light instead of this fancy LED light. There's like a hundred little LEDs inside this one big bulb, but it overheats and it turns itself off, or it when it's too cold it won't turn itself on, so it's very temperamental based on the temperature. Okay, so this one's good now. Quasi good. Okay. I have wires all over the place, I gotta start cutting them down. In fact, what I might do, just to keep it a little bit less ridiculous, I know that it won't be any longer than here, because the ESCs are gonna go through there, so let me just get some of this wire out of my way. Nothing else. Make sure extra stuff. But I do wanna try to make this build as clean as I possibly can. Okay, two more motors. Take the tape now. Oh, and the baby is crying, so that means I'm going to uh, end the video. I'll see you later. All right, the uh, Baby seemed to just be fussing a little bit, and then we went back, back to sleep. So I want to put these last two motors on, and then uh, and then call it a night. So I will probably append those two videos to one another. So that's probably going to be. You'll see if you can see the clock there. It'll, we'll do a little bit of time traveling in this video. This one is uh, counterclockwise.
should mean clockwise props, which means it should be here. So let's confirm. Let's see, is this counterclockwise? Yep, counterclockwise. Clockwise, this would be counterclockwise. And if I did them wrong, so be it. If I did them wrong, I can either fix it in the software or change it in the software, or I can just take them all off and put them rotate them all in one spot, get them where they should be. What did I just do? I just did something silly. Here we go. Look at that. There he goes. Don't need these little eggies. I love that I've got them. I don't need them. Okay. Just got one. These are nice and beefy though. So no, I complained earlier about not having an extra. They are pretty solid, so and I'll get a little Loctite for these as well once that comes. Like I said, I ordered it, so that's on its way. Finger tight, too loose is too loose, too tight is broke. <laughs> Getting tired, you can see I'm having a hard time holding my tools. So what I'll do is finish putting these two motors on. I'll snip the uh, the wires to make them a little bit more manageable. And like I said, I mean ultimately the wires they're really only going to be about an inch or two. If that, I'm going to mount the ESCs, and these are just going to get, you know, uh, soldered right into the ESCs, so there's really not going to be a lot of a lot of wire on these. So if I just cut it, like, way out here, this is probably triple or quadruple what I'm ultimately going to need, but it just makes it so that when I'm flipping this thing around, I don't have wires going all over the place while I'm building here. All right, and then the last motor, the last Titan oomph. That's 2306, 2450 KV. This is for props that go counterclockwise, so this is a clockwise motor. Oops, a little baggy here. I'm just going to go there, right there, take that out, that's all trash. That becomes extra. I'll probably keep these little cases, actually. I really like these little cases. Even if I won't keep the stuff, the foam for the motor. Just having little boxes for organizational purposes will be nice. Might keep those little twisty ties, too. This one, the heat shrink kind of came off it a little. Okay, last one. That one here. Oops, don't want to rotate it too much. And tighten the first few. I like to put them in by hand too. And then, uh, then tighten it down with the tools, this way I can tell I'm not cross-threading them. There goes my light, my temperamental light. Okay. Two, three, four. Alright. And then we'll cut this kind of to size. Oops, I don't really like how we're sitting. I want everything to sit nice and flat so that when I do my soldering it'll, it'll all look nice and clean. This is where they're going for a super clean build here. Okay, 
give myself plenty of extra. There we go. Cool. All right, so let's do a recap of where we are. I have soft mounted the flight controller, which is also my power distribution board. I have mounted the four motors, hopefully in the correct spots. This one is clockwise, so props go counterclockwise. That's usually what it means. Um, so hopefully these are all on the correct orientation. I'll be working with the ESCs. Maybe I'll do those tomorrow. Um, I need to put a little solder on them all. They're going to get mounted on the arms. I'll need to cut these, tin them, attach them, zip tie. And I think that's it. And then, of course, I'll need to then attach the power wires to here. So do that times four, and then I have to wire up the battery, or the, the uh, well, yeah, the battery. Got to wire up the battery. Got to wire up the camera. Just sit like this. Wire up the camera. Wire up the video transmitter, which is up here. And then I can open up my receiver as well. So instructions for the receiver, we'll put that right there. This is my little teeny tiny receiver, which is really cool. It's the RXSR um, FreeSky. It's both SBUS and CPPM. Smart port enabled. I don't know if there's a smart port. Um, pad. In the flight controller. Don't think that there is. I'll Google that. There's definitely S bus. Bunch of UARTs. I don't know if they're specifically smart bus or whatever, it's a smart port. All right, firmware upgradable. So I am going to upgrade the firmware on this guy. Maybe that'll be the first thing that I do. I'll make a little video of that and this. Um, so I think, I don't know if I want to take the sticker off or not. Yeah, a lot of people, oh cool, yeah. So a lot of people were complaining about not having the um, invert, I'll maybe do the QR code for this. See, see if we can get the video of it too. Maybe you can do it also. I don't know if that's going to focus in on it or not. Um, but I will do the QR code there and then upgrade the firmware. Uh, a lot of people were complaining about not having the inverted signals. Um, in order to get the inverted signals for telemetry, you had to uh, you had to do some like kind of crazy soldering. So they actually put an inverted pad, solder pad, right there. So I, so I should I'm actually probably gonna have to solder a little wire right there. But I think that'll be it. Um, I think that's the right spot. Again, I'll I'll Google it, and we will be attaching. Um, I could do pins and pop that, I think it goes in on this side. Uh, let's take a look. Let me think that through for just a second. Show you guys my thought process. So I, actually I'll probably use this one. Um, we'll see. I'm not sure what I'm going to use. Either way, this little tiny guy is going to have to be mounted somewhere. Don't know exactly where I'm going to put it. I've been liking putting my um, wires 
like here. And basically, actually, it would be on the back. Um, I like having the wires just kind of stick straight out like this. I just think it looks neat. And so a lot of guys will kind of make the, the V's go up like this, or down, or one up and one down. I've, I've done a bunch of those variations, but for whatever reason, I just think the coolest look is to have one little zip tie going that way, one little zip tie going that way, and then just heat, you know, heat shrinking your uh, wires to that. So I think that's probably what I'm going to do. But, um, so I think it through just a little bit. And this attaches, let's see. I don't need a positive and a negative and a power. And that's really all that I'm going to need, or a signal, I mean. So I can probably use this little servo cable. Just plug it in for fun. So this is going to go here. These are going to get wired maybe. I mean, if I do pins, pins are nice because then I can just literally just plug this in. I can like fold the wire on top of itself and then just plug it in really just like that. And I think it will mostly stay out of everybody's way. Where is my USB connection is on this side. So that's easy. And then, yeah, I would be able to just plug it in right there. I kind of like that. And I think I'll have to look for it. But somewhere I do have, I've got some pins already. Already, ready, already. I'll look for those in between now and the next video when I do that. And I, that might just be what I do. That might be the easiest thing, is to put some, a 90 degree pin on there. Yeah, I definitely don't have it handy, but I got it here somewhere. So I'll look for that, I'll find it, and I think that might be what I do, because that's probably going to be the easiest way to do the install. And then that, that should mean that I've got um, Oh, that actually might not work for me, because I'm going to be doing S bus, and it's 5 volt battery positive, um, which I'm not sure what the difference between bat plus and 5 volt is. I gotta, I gotta look that up. I don't know the difference there. I'll Google that as well. TX1, or I guess that's like the UART. Um, that one, and then S bus, buzzer positive, buzzer negative. A little buzzer in there. Huh. Okay. okay. Well, I probably won't do pins then because this would not play nicely with the pins because I don't have three in a row that I'm using. This is the S bus. Uh, would not would not work here. So, all right, so there goes that. So I'm not gonna use this thing. So we'll just get rid of this for now. This will go into the extra pile. I will use this one, which is fine, and we will just directly solder what we need. And I can do a little research as to exactly which, uh, which wire is which here. Although I'm going to guess that it is these three are the ones I need. I probably don't need the green and the white, the last two. Um, but I don't know for sure. So I'll look on the instructions. Let's see real quick. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad I looked. Oh, that's right. This one has that, uh, that redundancy thing, which is kind of neat. So it's ground, 5 volt, Smart port, S port, S bus out, and S bus in. So I won't be using the S bus in because I'm not going to be doing the redundancy thing. Um, I really wish that I had smart port on here 
That would make things much easier. But I really don't think I do unless I can use a UART. Maybe it's a UART that I use, so this TX1 might work just fine. I gotta I gotta Google it. I'll figure it out. Here you can see how the uh, how the um, the redundant one works. It's really neat. But I don't need a redundant thing. And this is just how to set it all up on the, uh, the Tyrannus X9D, which I've got. Cool. All right, well, I think that's the end of this, I guess, video number four now. And tomorrow I'll work on maybe the whole thing or the next time I, I build. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or not. Maybe Wednesday. Anyway. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Catch you later.